because there is no end. There's no arrived. There's only just finding what brings us joy, what opens us up deeper, what brings other people, draws other people in and inspires others. That's the beauty of the art journey is there is no arrived. We're just walking along this path. A lot of people, Diana Shine does not need any introduction, but um, I have an introduction here for you. Diana has been an artist for over 40 years, working in acrylics, oils, and watercolors. She spent the first 15 years of her art journey studying with renowned Russian Impressionist teachers and over 25 years working mainly in acrylics. She has exhibited her work in more than 50 solo exhibitions and won numerous top national awards, including the Artist Magazine, all media competition first place and bold brush outstanding acrylic. Diana's work is included in publications such as the Artist Magazine, Watercolor Magic and North Light Books. And her painting Americana was featured in the 2013 edition of Acrylic Works, the best of acrylic painting published by North Light Books. Diana has given workshops, lectures, and demonstrations around the US and Canada, Italy, and China. And she currently teaches online with Acrylic University where her videos are enjoyed by thousands around the world. To Diana, teaching is a joy as well as an art. Her classes are both informative and inspirational, conveying not only theoretical art concepts, but also delving into deeper issues of creativity and the ongoing artistic journey. So Diana teaches in person and online for Acrylic University, but her mentorship is for all mediums. And it will be very different than her teaching there. And she's here today to tell you how she can help you become the artist that you want to become. That's right. What based on your goals, your voice and your journey. So Diana's mentorship starts on January 18th. It will run on the third Thursday of every month from 10 till noon. And uh, we're just gonna have a little chat here today. So if you have questions, please jot them down and we'll try to answer them at the end, okay? Great. And welcome to, um, I see Anna and Joanne there, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, thanks for coming. So uh, Diana, what started you on your art journey? Well, <laughs> I I spent a uh, part of my childhood uh, raised in a cabin in the woods, not really uh, around art at all. But it, when I was 16, I went with a, a little singing group to Europe. And one of my first um, inspiring moments of seeing original art was I went to the Sistine Chapel and this was in the 70s and it was half cleaned and half dirty. And I, up until then, I'd only seen pictures in a textbook. I'd never seen, like this was my first original art that I'd seen, except for, you know, the little Elvis painting art in the park things that I've been to. Um, but I just, it, it was like, it was dropped from the heavens. It was so inspirational and magical and like, the thought that a human being did that was just, it, it just moved me beyond words. It was like a, a, a an opening in my heart that I'd never experienced before. And then we went on to uh, Israel where I saw, I went to the Hadassah hospital and then, um, and there were the, the stained glass windows by Mark Chagall, the 12 tribes of Israel and the desert sunlight was coming through these stained glass windows and were painting me and my friends with light, with colored light. And uh, I'd been a Mark Chagall fan uh, through books. I through my textbooks and my art classes in school. And the, the idea of just being in his painting, being filled with light was another moment and I just said, I want to be an artist. This is what I want to do. And the thing that really tipped it was after I was married, I had a one child, another on the way. I went to an exhibit in Seattle of Russian Impressionism by uh, Impressionist artists Sergei Bongart and Nikolai Feshin. And their brushwork, their passion, their emotion was so approachable. 
like the the other art I had seen was like dropped from the heavens by God to man. But this was a human being talking to me in poetic voice about his experience, his emotion, his um, passion. And I said, that's what I want to do. And I just need to find out how to do it. And so I searched out teachers that had studied with these two artists and just started taking classes. We didn't have much money. Um, so I modeled for my teacher uh, <laughs> to pay for my classes. <laughs> and um, th But that's what got me started. I fell in love with Impressionism and I, you know, I've taken little side roads off, but I, that's home to me that I always come home to that. And that person made it approachable for you. Um, you, when you were talking to me before you talked about it as your glowing core and you found your glowing core. Well, I love that. What I, what I try to talk to my students about is that, and, and the thing that I, I found in me, and, and that's what we're talking about here is that once an artist knows the basics, the beginning chapters of art, you know, how to functionally pick up the paint on your brush and put it down in values and colors and in, in a certain composition, how to sculpt form, whatever it is you do, then that's your poetry. That's the voice you're choosing to speak in. And, and I feel like every human being on the planet that's ever existed throughout time they're the only one they're a snowflake an individual and once we know the basics and we can kind of repeat the basics our job as artists or poets is to is to dig deeper and find that unique voice when we see a, a Renoir or we see a Matisse or we see a, a Michelangelo we can pick those paintings out, we know exactly who painted them. Because they were speaking from that authentic voice, their inner soul, their heart. Their... And that I feel like once we get beyond the basics, that's our goal is to dig deep and find it because that's what humanity needs. They need, they need us. <laughs> they need each and if we, if every single person on this planet did that, we would learn so much compassion and love and kindness towards one another. Um, and so that's my philosophy <laughs> about our, our voice as artists, finding that unique part in ourself that only you have, only I have, only Karen has, that glowing core, that inner person that needs expression. And so often life has handed us stuff that yeah. protects um, Enjoying the video? Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to be notified when new Masteries videos are added. <laughs> you also said you started this with a child and mm -hmm. starting your family. Do you want to tell us a bit about your early years, how you yeah. found your ballots and juggled it all? <laughs> well, I ended up with two children, a full-time job, and I was going to school in another city about an hour's drive away all at once. And I still was, you know... Uh, trying to paint. And so um, I I sort of made a, a deal with my husband. <laughs> he took the evening, he took the evening shift so I could get off to school. But my Mondays and my Saturdays, my Monday evenings and my Saturdays were my painting days. Um, three hours on a Saturday. So he, you know, I sort of said, if you do this, I will do this <laughs> for you. If you give me that three hours that I can paint without interruption, I will, you know, it, and sometimes it was, you know, something we were doing together as a family. Sometimes it was, you get to go out and do your thing for three hours tomorrow. <laughs> and I'll and I'll do the and I'll do the stuff. But I did that until I graduated from college and I actually studied education and I um, anthropology, teaching, learning how people learn rather than just learning how to teach kids. I studied how human beings actually acquire knowledge. And to me, that has had a great uh, effect in my life because my my business that I was running was a Montessori preschool. Oh, wow. And, 
Yeah. <laughs> and then later when I, I, when my kids were teenagers, I sold that business and said, I'm going full time with this. And, um, rented a studio in Seattle and uh, <laughs> just sort of folded up my other shop. And and that's when, um, it, you know, it, I really, I had to just get down. I still had teenagers. So what I did was um, just, again, negotiated with my family. My husband took Monday nights and Thursday nights. And those days I, I worked in my studio from Monday all through the night to cool. Tuesday, drop them off at school, go to my studio and work until I had to pick them up from school the following day. And I did that Monday and Tuesday. I did that Thursday and Friday so that I could have a full-time art career and not neglect my teenagers. Oh. Wow. That's <laughs> a huge commitment. Um, so it was a huge so commitment that it's, yeah. it's sort of how I learned to balance that until they left home yeah um, and we yeah. all have different things to juggle and balance and Absolutely. so you'll be able to help us with that kind of thing yeah. too yeah um so this mentorship is for all mediums mm -hmm. and you know a lot of people have been learning from you at acrylic university so can right. you tell us a bit about how this mentorship is going to be different from what you do there yeah at acrylic university we really um address the basics of of art through direct um, demos and teaching. I have a, a really kind of a unique teaching style where I take people step-by-step step through the basics. And then we record our lessons, record our demos, and then it goes to thousands of people. And we communicate via Facebook and um, through live events. Once a month, I do a live workshop where people can text me, but it's still hundreds of people. And Mastrius, I will have eight people maximum. And we speak live time, face to face, person to person. You show me your work. We talk about your specific individual goals, not just this broad. And I really believe everybody should have this broad education of knowing how to just stick paint down on, on your, on your uh, canvas. Um, but it just takes it a little deeper than that. It's more one-on-one. -on -one. It's not about me and it's not about our basics. It's about you and what you're stuck on, where you want to go, what your dreams are, um, how you want to um, address your specific art journey. And my art journey looks very different from yours, I'm sure. Once we get talking... <laughs> We'll find out how very, very different we are in our art journey. And everybody's spot in that journey is different. So we will learn to um, be friends. We will learn how to have compassion to one another. Even if someone's further in a different place in their art journey than you, we'll learn to, to show a deep amount of compassion because it's not an easy journey. Um, there's... We're right now we're all women here. And um, I think women face a lot because we tend to be the compassionate ones, the caregivers. We tend to slide our time over for other people. And um, that makes our journey like we tend to disrupt it with the needs of other people. So one of those things is we're going to just be able to communicate with each other and share our own particular wins and how like how you manage, how you navigate your art world will be of interest to us too. So part of my job as a mentor is to get you to articulate what you want, to get you to share with us how you've gotten where you are so far, what your art looks like, what you want it to look like. Um, there aren't any absolutes your art can look however you want it to look you don't have to make it look I mean so often we we have somebody like for me it was the Russian impressionists and many like 25 years down the road I said wait a minute I'm not Russian <laughs> and and I and you know the Russians have their poetry their music their novels and it's all very emotional and 
was raised in a different world, in a different society with different um, different things that animated me. So in that way, I used them as my springboard, but you know, I have to find who I am. And so often we find someone who, oh, if only I could paint like you when I grow up. And so you try that. But really what you want to do is paint like you when you grow up. <laughs> and that's what we're after. Does that so help? So how, how do you help people find their signature style? There's a lot of ways. And it, it will depend on you guys and what you say you want. Like some people, for some people, it's brushwork. And so we will have homework assignments where we'll do the same image in four different styles of brushwork. For some people, it's like, I'm not sure I have um, my signature, you know, what is the theme of my painting? So we'll do, I, I will encourage people through your homework to do some journaling, to dig deep, to find out, to go online, to research other paintings, to find out what makes you glow inside, what opens your heart out and makes your, makes you sing inside. <laughs> Those are, you know, that homework for the month will be like just, you know, maybe going to a museum or a gallery and picking out those particular pieces of art that that resonate. And it, 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 and there's no rules on that. Your heart is your heart. Whatever resonates with you and, you know, will be different. And so that's another thing. And maybe I will send you on a quest to, you know, snip out a bunch of pictures that you can show me online here's the trajectory of what I love. You know, those are some things, but the homework will involve some painting. And later on, once I know who you are, we've, we've really started to understand each other and to see each other's work. I will give you some homework to do like this month, do two paintings. And the first painting, just paint what you do. The second painting, push or lean towards what you want to do eventually, who you, what you want your paintings to eventually look like. So you will have a, here's what I do now. And even if you make a sloppy mess of the, here's where I want to go, <laughs> it's okay. Cause we're going to be loving, kind, gentle, and encouraging to each other to say, I see what you're saying. I see where you're trying to go. Let's see what skills you need in particular to get you to where you want to go. Let's talk about that. So it sounds like you're not looking at technique unless that's something that the group wants. And there right. are times, of course, where we all need help with technique, but that you're you're planning on learning more about each individual member and helping them find where they are on their journey. Um, right. I'll be on a really different stage of my journey from somewhere else. So it's going to be a lot more individual is what you're saying. Right. And if like most of us need a technique refresher or want that, then we'll go, we'll dive in that. Um, if most of you want a, you know, now I've got this body of work and I don't know how to get people to see it because I have something to say and no one to say it to. <laughs> then we'll go that direction. And we actually will have the time and the energy to do both things. Let's brush up on technique. Let's figure out where you're painting. You know, we might do a, um, a critique where we're finding out where my paintings might be falling a little flat. Um, if that's what you want, where, you know, and sort of diving in and like most people, for most people, and I don't know um how it is for you but for most people they find they overwork their paintings they don't know when to stop that is a huge number one thing that everybody says across the board and I'm guilty of it too I just hideously overworked a demo and I was it was done half hour in and I was supposed to demo for an hour and so I just I took that car and I drove it right off the cliff and it crashed and burned <laughs> I'm sure a crash and burn to you, I would have thought it was a masterpiece. <laughs> but but I think we do that. And so one of the things is, is really having this discussion about when we go blank. You know, what is it for you in particular 
that makes you keep going when you should have stopped half hour ago? What, you know, what impetus is it in you? And there are real tried and true techniques that I have used, not this last time, I totally flew that one, but there are tried and true techniques that I've developed that we can go over and that we can practice in our homework, we can practice and talk about, we can journal about. Um, usually the overworking comes from a place of fear or a place of helpfulness. I'm just trying to get people to understand what I'm saying. And what if they don't understand this little part? I got to make sure they, you know. <laughs> and so it's a little bit about fear of people that might not get me. So, so yeah. So when okay. the, you yeah. were talking about not doing techniques as much, so how do you focus your critiques if you're not focusing on technique? And although you say that, I'd still like a little talk about my techniques too when I'm in there. But I think I think that we probably will do both depending on what people ask. But I am going to give you some questionnaires to determine the direction you want to go. Because so often, once you've get the basics in place, the next part of our art journey is figuring out when, where, and how to break some of the rules. Because that's what all the good artists do. But just breaking them willy-nilly doesn't work. So, <laughs> so yeah. And so uh, part of, of the, this, Karen, will be, yeah, we're going to look at critiques. If you want me to critique you on like the standard stuff. Do you have good design? Do you have a great color story? Are your values strong? Have you said something with your brushwork? You know, it. we can do that. And I'm happy to because I'm good at it. <laughs> but further, to take us further down this road is, you know, the main thing we're looking at is this painting driving me forward to reward my goals or is it just getting me stuck in the old stuff that I've been stuck in um is it just more of the stuck stuff and so so often you know moving forward means making mistakes and so often we put our self-esteem into making mistakes like oh I made a mistake I just I hit that oh but we, you know, <laughs> I just helped my grandson learn how to ride his bike and you have to have a few skinned knees. That's all there is. To it. No way around it. You got to skin your knee a couple of times and then you learn the balance. So that's, you know, mistakes are part of the journey. So we're going to look at that and how we can push through that to get to the next step for each of you, your personal goal, the next step in your journey, the next step in your goal how do you push through that? How do you push through the mistakes and get to where you found your balance? So, so the best fit for your group at this point are emerging artists. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a question about that, but um, with the emerging artists, can you address the different mediums? Yeah, yeah. Now I started my painting journey in watercolor and I painted in watercolor for 10 years. Um, then I just felt like I was getting a little too precise and tight. I would spend sometimes 12 hours on my drawing before I laid the color. You know, I wanted something a little faster and a little bit more like my Russian impressionist inspiration. So I moved to oils and I studied, uh, portraiture and landscape painting with some pretty famous and amazing oil painters until I developed a severe um, chemical reaction to the oil paints. So, but I am first, I painted in oil paints for six years. Uh, then I, you know, there I was sitting in my new studio with, I gave away all my oil paints and solvents because it was causing me brain seizures, not just oh. allergic reactions. I was actually having strokes from the paint. So oh. I, this is a kind of a cool story because it's sort of what happens when you're willing to just say, what now? I gave away all my paints and I sat in my empty studio that I was paying a huge amount of rent for with, <laughs> oh no, what now? And I got a phone call that very 
day from a lady who said, I hear you're an acrylic painter. And I, <laughs> I said, uh, uh, <laughs> yes, I am. I'm an acrylic painter. And she said, well, I am too. And I'm stopping. I've been a career painter and I'm no longer going to paint. So I have some paints to give away. Would you like them? And I said, wow. yes. I drove to her house and she didn't just have paints. She had gallons of golden acrylic paints, rolls of, of beautiful canvases, eight foot stretcher bars, tables, cabinets, lighting, everything to outfit a studio. She gave it all to me. It filled my Euro van with all the seats out twice. Oh. That day, the day I gave up oil painting, she gave me $10,000 worth of acrylic paints and materials. And I just said, somebody up there wants me to paint in acrylics and they want me to paint big. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> right? So, but that's what launched me in acrylics. Um, and so I've been painting in acrylics for about 25 years. Um, but I do know how oils work. I, I painted plein air with them for six years and did a lot of oil, like, at that point, I was doing three or four uh, oil sessions a week, plus um, life drawing sessions, like six a week, <laughs> just d pushing into educating myself. So I'm those three mediums I'm really versed in, but I'm also really versed in what makes a painting good, whether even if you're in dry medium, pencil, pastel, inks whatever, I am pretty versed at what makes a painting a good painting. I have judged, I don't know how many art shows that were multi-medium. So um, you can uh, be assured, even if I don't know the techniques of pastel, if you're a pastelist, I will know what constitutes a good painting. So, <laughs> so that's that. <laughs> So at Acrylic University, you are teaching people what people want to know. How would you describe your own style if you were painting for you? If I'm painting for me, I am a contemporary impressionist. There's a few of my pieces in the back. I don't know if you can see the things. I have a, uh, I like to have a really strong value sense, a good, um, color story. I really like, one of my goals in my work is to add a little mystery to my paintings. You know, I, I tend to be kind of in your face a lot and I would like to hold back something. That's one of my personal goals is to add mystery, but I really like strong brushwork, uh, bold, strong value work, a beautiful color story, a color harmony, and, um, you know, a strong composition. Those are some things that are really important to me and my work. And um, I want to evoke emotion. I want my paintings to be poetic uh, so that when people look at them, they can see and feel something different. It's a good, someone told me once, one of my teachers told me once, the difference between a good ad and a good painting is that in advertising, you can get, you can look at it for one second and understand what the artist was saying. A good painting, you can look at it for a hundred years and never get to the bottom of what the artist was saying. And so that's what I want is the hundred year look, not the not the one second look. So <laughs> that's what I'm after. Is, is that impossible? <laughs> it sounds amazing. Um, I, I was just looking someday. <laughs> I was just looking at the chat and there's one here that says I love your message of a safe space in which to grow artistically and I think that that's one of the big things that Mastrius works towards as well is that we are a non-competitive safe space full yeah. of compassion and we can learn from each other as yeah. well absolutely it's not just my voice it's all your voices we all have something important that we've learned. We all have something important from our own journey. We all have something important to say. And if all of us are open, even to someone who appears to be more of a beginner, because the word emerging artists has a, 
there's a continuum, a, a bigger line. Um, if we can open ourselves to what other people have to say and be compassionate when they're not saying things you want to hear. <laughs> I mean, this is part of the journey too, is in learning how to embrace each other as artists, knowing that there's no right and wrong and there's no end of the path. I was just speaking to a friend of mine who's in his late eighties. He was an architect in Los Angeles for many years, a, a famous architect, and he is on an art journey now. And he's so excited. He's so optimistic and so empowered because this is something that can be a driving force for the rest of his life because there is no end. There's no arrived. Um, there's only just finding what brings us joy what opens us up deeper, what brings other people, draws other people in and inspires others. To me, that's the, you know, that's the beauty of the art journey is there is no arrived. We're just walking along this path and that's our life. So if people are thinking they might want to talk about business and things as well, what can you help us with there? Well, I can help you uh, figure out through homework and through discussion how to develop your business paperwork, like your bio, your resume, your artist statement. Those are all important things. Um, I can help you through our discussions to and homework to research your local community for what resources are there and provide you with online resources. What I can't do is show you how to get into a gallery. <laughs> and I'll tell you why. I've been in lots of galleries and I have approached lots of galleries and the galleries I've actually gotten into happened by accident, the ones I approached. <laughs> and I think it's important to, you know, to hold yourself in and hold on to the skills you have when approaching a gallery because most galleries get 20, 30 or more people coming to them per day and oh. they're ready to say no. <laughs> and so developing that inner skill that says, no, I'm good. I'm worth, I, I think my paintings are worth being seen. And I think my paintings have a viable place here in your space, even if they say no. <laughs> um, it's an important skill to develop that inner strength that says, no, I believe in my work. I believe in what I've done. And, um, you know, and being able to stand up against winds that say, yeah, well, you're not right for us. That hurts. <laughs> There's no way around it. It hurts. But then to just hang on to yourself and know, but I can help you learn how to enter shows and um, figure that stuff out. So that's what I can. And you say you have judged shows as well. Yeah. Would you be willing to help people when they're looking and saying what kind of things are judged in the show? Mm -hmm. Oh, I have a template for that that I've created. And um, I, what I can also do because of my background and training is that if my uh, if the people in this mentorship are wanting to start a, a teaching aspect to their journey. You're ready to branch out and teach someone else. I can teach you how to do that. Uh, I can I can show you how to get that part of your journey started and what to look for in that. If you're already there, no worries. <laughs> but I do, you know, I've just developed so many materials along the way because I've been doing this 40 years and I've saved them all and put them into booklets and uh Put them into one sheet flyers. <laughs> so we have a template. Uh, you know, if you're ready to branch out and judge a show, I have a template for how you do that. Um, and I have actually, I wish we were all closer because I've actually taken groups of students to like the local museum with this template. And we we treat the paintings in the museum as if we were during a show. And oh, yeah, that would be fun that step-by-step -step process of what you look for in painting. And they've all said it just increases their ability to enjoy art so much more. 
So and we can certainly do that online. It's just yeah. not as personal. Yes, we can. We can do that online. And I'm happy to do that with you to really step you through, you know, here's the, the 10 big things you look at in a painting and look for so that we can find the artist's voice. Now, some paintings, you know, uh, the thing that made me want to be a uh, oil painter was I went to the Metropolitan Art Museum and saw an original Vincent van Gogh when my kids were like preteens and my husband and kids went off to the rest of the museum, looked at everything. I stood in front of that Van Gogh and I cried and I cried and I cried. And there was a puddle of tears at my feet. I, I went and saw the one painting and then I was too emotional and I had to go. Uh, <laughs> and I said, sometimes art does that to you. And it doesn't matter what rules they used or what tools or whatever, because that person had stripped themselves bare whatever it was he had done he stripped himself down to his soul and just put his soul on the painting and I saw him and I fell in love with that soul and I just you know <laughs> had that moment and that's you know that defies all logic and that defies all tools and rules but for the rest of the paintings <laughs> And everybody will have that cry moment for a different painting and a different artist. <laughs> it's not just Vincent. It's like, you'll just see it and you'll know it. Yeah. Oh, so beyond that, though, there's this set of tools that I have for everybody. So. And you're very generous in your sharing of them. So. I, am. <laughs> I want everyone to have them. I want everybody to have these tools because it just increases your enjoyment and your pleasure in life. It increases your knowledge base. And I think all artists um, should increase their knowledge of, of the greater art world. Um, the other thing I have through teaching at a, uh, it, it's actually, it was a retirement group who was studying um, art history and they asked me to be the professor. And so it was oh. a group of 50 retirees who wanted to learn art history. So I, studied, I didn't study art history in college, but I spent four months uh, putting together a slideshow and studying about art history. So I have that background too. And we can look at some old, old paintings as well as new contemporary paintings, paintings by masters, and really have some discussions about what makes this a long lasting, why is this one stood the test of centuries and this one has not why is this considered good art you know and some paintings I'm baffled I have to tell you so, <laughs> so I am baffled why this is considered good art but I'll tell you what I know and then we can discuss the rest and you can tell me what you know because <laughs> I'm sure you have some stuff there too that we can that we can expand each other's universes with so Diana is doing an event this afternoon as well on uh, goal setting. Yeah. Oh, not this afternoon, but on the 18th. Um, oh, I beg your pardon. I yeah. wrote it down the wrong way. Then, so it's, uh, it's in the after, after our first session on the 18th. Right. After our first session, I have a free goal setting um, discussion group going on through Mastrius where we're just going to talk about how we set our goals, what we do to, um, what we personally do to achieve our goals, how our goals change over time, just a real sort of grabbing in and an in more in-depth look because it's the new year and everybody makes resolutions. I'm resolved to paint more. And sometimes just doing that isn't enough. And yeah. so, yeah. <laughs> So event, uh, for members month. here, yeah. Um, members here have get to watch for free. Mem yeah. Masters members, um, yeah. it, it will go into the events library. So Masters members who don't have an events library can watch it for a week after, and then it will go in the library where it will live forever. Mm -hmm. So we can watch it there, but. We can also ask you about that because goal setting is not just a new year kind of thing. No. Uh -uh. <laughs> so it's we will be working on that yeah. ongoing. 
Yes, ongoing. And we can, uh, depending on your interest in in how you want to achieve your goals, we'll we'll do a deep dive into that. This is like uh, a one hour just conversation with two artists really getting in. How do we do it? But in our mentorship, we're going to go deeper, take a deeper dive into what are your goals and how, what are your specific tools that will enable you to reach your goals? You know, what are your, because I'm going to talk about what my tools are. They may not be your tools. Um, and so that's sort of what our, our mentorship is going to just take us deeper and deeper into that. And I really want you to find out who you are as an emerging artist, as a emerged artist, <laughs> because I think that's the tool that takes us from emerging artist to, I, I don't want to say to the artist who's there because we're not there, but, but to an emerged artist, <laughs> to an artist who has something to say, knows how to say it and can get it out into the world to say it to a greater audience of people. Um, so those are some tools that help you get there. Now, some people don't want that. They just want to paint and they just want to paint better. Some people do not want to emerge out into the world. That's not their goal. And we'll look at that too, because painting can be as private as a personal journal and you just want to learn how to express that part of you better. And so it isn't just a goal of how do I reach farther, get higher, be famous. You know, that's not the goal. The goal is whatever your goal is. The goal is whatever you're seeking in the deepest part of yourself to express. Um, and for me, my goal is to paint better to get that, to get those elements in that I was talking about. My goal is to just be better at expressing myself, better at finding myself, uh, better at not losing myself to the circumstances of life, which I do. <laughs> they, they can be and overwhelmed. That's a very, yeah, that's a very important thing. I mean, when I go into doing a painting mm -hmm. and I have an idea and then all of a sudden my left brain says this needs to look like this yep. and getting into your right brain and doing things like that so I'm really excited about this mentorship and we do start on the 18th and we're not finished yet but I just thought that I'd see if there are any questions right. here let's, we let's... do have a few spaces left in the group okay so let's yeah let's take questions if you have any otherwise I'll just keep black <laughs> <laughs> You're, you're, you're uh, muted, Leanne. Oh, oh, unmute yourself. I, there I you was go. just going to say, it's interesting when you do that, <laughs> when you speak, like it's, it's good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you. <laughs> you're, do you pronounce your name Leanna or Leanne? Leanne. Okay. Great. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, yeah, I'm, I, think that no matter where or who we are as artists, I mean, some of us are artist writers, some of us are artist sculptors, some of us are artist garden makers or artist bakers. <laughs> it isn't just a one thing. It's how we bring our right brain, how we bring our intuitive selves and our deep self into whatever activities we're doing. And I also have some tools for that. Um, I, <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> but well, I, I think, yeah, I think having activities that uh, would help me get into my right brain and stay there more would really help. Yeah. I mean, earlier on in my painting journey, and I don't know about you, but I was painting along and struggling and trying to get the values right and the colors right. And all of a sudden, one day, I just did this amazing painting that seemed to just like come out of nowhere. And it was fabulous. And I was like, this is how I want to paint this. And then I spent the next five years trying to recreate the situation that made that painting. And it took me some time to realize it's not recreating the time of day or the light coming in the room or the songs I was playing. It's in here. 
And there are some really great techniques that I learned from studying the flow technique in business, how uh, to learn the flow technique is just, you know, if you, if you Google that, <laughs> then you'll find that it's just another way of saying, how do you, there are really specific tools that they've done for business because businesses have all the money to research this, but how do you get into that state of mind? How do you develop that state of mind? How do you stay in that state of mind for a period of time? How do you know when you've left that state of mind? And so I've developed some tools for artists based on the flow techniques um, by, I can't even pronounce the guy's name, Nihaichichichmichu or something. <laughs> he just passed away recently. But he developed these really specific techniques for getting into that right brain state and staying there. And for him, when they did the research, they found out that business people, when they can get in that flow state, do more work half a day on Monday than other people in their industry do the whole work week because they are in that relaxed, focused, attentive state of mind where nothing else exists except this work in front of me and the next step in this work in front of me is what we're doing, not 10 steps down the road. So I've got that too. We can talk about the flow state and the flow technique and how to find it, get there and stay there. Um, so I love that. Yeah. yeah. I love that. I've, really I've, uh, I have, uh, I was looking at the chat. We have uh, a member here who says no questions as she's fangirling right now. She feels like it's a brush with fame and she has signed up for the group. Oh, great. Thank you. I felt I felt the same way when I saw Diana was going to be mentoring and I said I want to work with her. <laughs> well, thank you very much. <laughs> You're just really um I can feel your enthusiasm and joy for all of it and you're so generous in what you're giving. And um mm -hmm. I'm just excited to get it going. Oh, that's great. I'm excited too. And I'm excited to be one-on-one -on -one with students again. Um, after I, I moved from the Seattle area where I spent my whole career to Portland to be near my grandkids five years ago and thought it would be an easy transition and it wasn't. <laughs> and then COVID hit and we were grandkidding full time. So our career didn't exist nothing you know it was just yeah. like flatlined and my husband is a professional musician him too we just you know 10 hours a day caring for grandkids because there was no daycares in school so and my kids had to work so <laughs> but then um acrylic university found me and i found a venue for speaking to uh thousands of people and that I have to say that opened the door for me uh, because I I became depressed and I became sad because my art career was like all the galleries closed. My art career was dead. Uh, I couldn't even get out of the bed in the morning except my grandkids were coming over. So I had, you know. But as far as me as an artist, that depression was serious and being able to tap into my joy again, tap into what originally made me want to be an artist and speak about that to other people brought me out of that, out of the dumps, <laughs> brought I me think, back to life again. Yeah, I think that's really important because we don't talk about that as much, but art is really healing. And yeah. a lot of us go to that place and need some help being pulled out of it. So you have experienced that way too. Especially when you're in a slump or you have a block. Yeah. And um, blocks are really common with creative people. And um, I consider that the enemy. <laughs> For the artist, that's the devil. <laughs> Sorry if that's too much. But, but having a creative uh, block is like... It's something in us that makes us not want to get to the next step in our journey. And it'll find every reason, oh, there's laundry to do and I got to mow the lawn and, 
you know, then shopping to do and did a bit of there's, and then even if you have done all the things on your to-do list, you'll just expand the to-do list. So you don't have to engage in art because there's that thing. Um, and it turns out that thing is exactly what we need. And so I have some, I have, um, some experiences that I've had. I don't really have tools for you because it's a personal thing, but I have experiences that might help you as we learn to get past and mash up those, those things that are trying to stop us. Like it's the same thing that tries to stop us from eating better foods or from taking that walk in the afternoon that we need so desperately. It's that thing that always puts excuses in our way. But, you know, if we can talk about our experiences of how we individually, and I'm not the only one who's done it, you've all done it too, I'm sure. And you have experiences that are relevant to us in how we can, um, on a day-to-day -day basis, because I found that blocks get there because I haven't been attending to myself and my goals on a day-to-day -day basis. So um, you just a little bit of self-care on a day-to-day -day basis and we can um, pass through and break through that block until another one comes up. It happens all the time with creative people. Uh, writer's block is so common. Um, and so we just have to know how to deal with that as it arrives and um, that you're not alone in it. Like sometimes you feel like I'm the only person who can't get past this and I'm really sad, but no, you're not the only person. <laughs> I guarantee you we've all done it. Um, and I guarantee you that there are ways that we can help each other get through it. And sometimes it's just like um, an AA meeting. <laughs> Hi, my name is Diana and I have a block. <laughs> Artists Anonymous. Right. <laughs> and and we can hear each other out and then, you know, provide well, safe support for each other when, as we, because it's sometimes really emotional. So yeah. as we pass through it. So uh, the way our sessions work is generally in the beginning, we do watch a video and then we do talk about our celebrations and our challenges if we have challenges so that we can be addressing things like that in there too. So that's a good place to sort of, it's a safe place again, to talk about your blocks right. or things that are challenging you because we are there to build community. Right. And with and each I, other. One of the things I really missed when I had to stop taking oil painting classes, uh, when I switched to acrylics, there weren't any teachers to teach me. I had no more classes to go to. Um, one of the things I missed was that sense of community, that sense of a group of people striving together for a, something. And I think that here we're going to um, have this community again, just this little core group of people who have each other's backs. Um, who that's, what I, that's what I will be working towards. I really love my art community. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Me too. It's been so great talking to you, Diana, and I can't wait till we start on January 18th. And what is it from 10 till noon mountain time? Um, so 9 a.m. Pacific, yeah. I, I would have had it backwards. Pacific. I thought it was 11, but I had it. I had the time zones reversed. So it's 9 a.m., which is still fine. <laughs> 9 a.m. Pacific yes. will be good. And it's going to be on the third Thursday of every month. And then we will also have a mid-month meeting as a group. Diana is not expected to be there, um, but it's a chance for us to build community too. So I'm really excited to get to know the people who are in there and to start working with you, Diana. Thank you so much. Well, thank you all for being here. And I really hope to see you soon. And I really hope to hear about your art journey and to see your art. I'm excited to see what you do and how you do it. Um, that will be fun for me. And thank you, Karen, so much. You have been so helpful and so great. I really appreciate all you've done. Oh, so. fine. Thank Thanks. you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Diana oh, and Karen. Thank you so much. Thank you, Karen. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Karen. Thank, thank you, you for Anna, coming. Anna and Joanne. I'm so happy you've been here. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.
Bye. Bye.